applications then um, wrote kind of the, the mobile wave, started selling mobile apps in 2008 and um, had a good, good few years um, doing that until I um, uh, found myself working with a, um, an enterprise travel software business in, in 2015. And they asked me the question, how are people going to book a uh, plane ticket in 10 years time? And, and Alexa just launched. I was like, well, let's let's test it out. So we did a first proof of concept for a company called Allegiant Air to prove that we can actually book a plane ticket just using voice commands. And that was really exciting. And then we decided to um, build a, a product around this. So how do we build a product um, to take advantage of this? And so we then ended up working with uh, with Marriott and built the first ever in-room concierge powered by um, Alexa. I launched in Marriott Hotel, um, County Hall here in London in um, uh, December uh, 2016. Um, and that's you know really got us embedded with kind of understanding the the operating environment with um, with these smart speakers and and uh, the kind of the conversational um, nuances around that. And that was um, the, the beginning of the say it now journey. Is it that that first build? Well, it was it was it was it was during, it was during that time I met um, my co-founder Sandra Season, and so we were we we built out the um, this product Dazzle. Um, Amazon brought out Alexa for hospitality, and um, we then wanted to find a different product to work on. So we saw this um this opportunity to to start say it now. We um, founded the business on the first of October twenty. 18 um the week after uh, had a, a series of lucky breaks right so the week after we landed diageo as our first client and built um a whiskey tasting experience was kind of, that kind of became our early calling card then 2019 we entered a competition called the alexa cup which was a, a global competition that amazon put out to try and find um people who were thinking about what could be done within this platform we won the, the uk round we won the european round and we went um and brought home the alexa cup from uh, uh from the us and that uh, got us clo- working very closely with uh, the, the team at amazon that allowed us to kind of raise some money and then um our kind of second lucky break was then in 2020 during covid um we applied for an innovate uk grant because um what we saw was the this opportunity to, to close the gap so it's interesting to build a voice experience within Alexa, but it's really hard to get people to use it. So we want, wanted to, to see what we could do to drive traffic, but then also saw this huge opportunity in the world of, of audio advertising. Uh, it was crying out for measurement and kind of engaging formats. So we we saw um, that, I don't know, if we take, take a step back, that people spend about 30% of their media consumption time in audio. So, you, you know, you spend time in social, online, or watching TV, but about 30% of your media consumption time is actually um, in audio. But it only gets about 8% mm. um, of global ad spend. So if we could unlock that and bring the kind of ad spend into parity with um, uh, audio consumption, we unlock a kind of a $56 billion opportunity. So we thought that was worthwhile going after. So we launched this concept of actionable audio ads in uh, summer 2020 um, with uh, Global Media, which is Europe's biggest radio company. They gave us um, 15 million ad impressions to play with. Um, and we uh, worked with a leading charity. So we worked with NSPCC, Macmillan, um, Crisis, Comic Relief and the WWF ran all of these campaigns and proved to the world um, that people were engaging with their um, smart speakers if um, prompted to do so by listening to a standard radio ad. But moreover, for the radio um, or the, the brands, we could then d- deliver back uh, this idea of kind of uh, real time analysis. We knew when the radio ad was being played, we knew when people were engaging on a smart speaker, and then you can then tie that together to get kind of in the moment attribution, which is what this um, industry was crying out for. And and that's exactly it. I suppose the, the big thing for product design, you know, I have the old product design uh, engineer hat on here. It's identifying problems and seeing how you can fix them. And that's one thing that I've seen and engaged with a lot of people in the, the radio, traditional radio space is that how do we measure our audience? It's very old school and that they don't know. It's, a lot of it is like guesswork. So to have a product like you are providing where they can actually get the data on who's listening, when they're engaging with their ads is is game changer, without a doubt. Yeah. And and on that, like um that journey, the the technical side of it, you know, the, the amount of coding or work that goes in and testing, what has that been like for you? Do you build that all in-house yourself with your team? It's- so um it, this this brings us on to like another lucky break. So Sandra, who I um 
I uh, founded the business with. He's he's a brilliant product guy. So he he used to work in uh, Gibraltar for party gaming, party poker, building high freaks, all the kind of mobile properties for um, uh, party gaming, party poker through the noughties. And so um, his vision is all around um, enterprise grade, um, high frequency transactional systems. So he then went on to be the head of mobile at the Royal Bank of Scotland for a while before we met. Um, and so he's really good at product vision, what kind of platform we needed to build. And we were using an outsourced development partner to um, help us build those um, those early skills. Uh, then in summer 21, we were introduced to uh, another fantastic person called um, Norbert Hallvarth, and he's been working in North America for the last 25 years building ad tech and successfully exiting ad tech businesses. And he'd spotted the same opportunity we had mm -hmm. um, in 2019 after his his last exit, and has you know put his you know used, used the funds from that to put a, a development team together and built a platform to author and kind of create these voice experiences. Um, and and we'd gone to market very much um, product, well, sorry, market fits, kind of um, went to market without looking for the right go to market proposition and he'd gone to market with the technology um so we met um got on incredibly well and was like this is i'm supposed to sound after i met him that's like this is amazing like he's built the tech that we need and we built the go to market proposition that he needs like we need to get together anyway um 100 days after our first call uh, we ended up acquiring that business and so then we acquired a north american kind of um sales team a uh the, a Canadian trading entity, a development team, and brought Norbert on as a, a parity um, co-founder. So we then had a CTO, myself, and um, Sandra as a chief product officer, all kind of getting on very well. And that, that was kind of formed the foundation of, you know, I've got a, a growing um, a growing development team that's based in, uh, in Pune in India, which is the um, center of excellence for uh, for voice technology. Wow. And and there's a lot of parallels, and I'm, I'm seeing my own journey in, in that in regards to yourself and how important the team is and you find that out very quickly uh when you start a business or running it it's it's getting people it's the famous steve jobs quote hire people that are smarter than you isn't that it and get 100%. them in, get them in and i i like to use the kind of i'm a big movie fan as well i, I kind of look at myself like nick fury and i'm recruiting the avengers you know i'm trying to find yeah. my hulk my iron man so on and so forth and people who really believe in what you're doing as well is very important too because i'm sure on your journey, you've a lot of, have had a lot of people that look at you kind of like, what are you talking about? I don't get this. It has no future. How do you deal with that side of it from a, um, a I suppose, a leadership role or a entrepreneurial, those knockbacks? Um, what's your perspective on it and, and, and attitude towards that? Well, interesting segue. It sounds like we scripted this, but I use Iron Man. So like, I said, the way I'm like, look, <laughs> this, this is inevitable, right? So we've seen that the way that humans and technology and com computing engage with each other is morphing and will end up with um, natural language. So we're, we're actually seeing it, and it's, it's really useful. We're seeing it play out right now with kind of all the chat GPT um, kind of large language models. And so the way that we are engaging is becoming more fluid, more natural, and that is really setting the path and kind of paving the way to us talking to our technology more and more. And if you look at Iron Man, look at Tony Stark, when he is flying around in that iron suit, shooting the bad guys, he is not controlling it with an app. Right, he is talking to Jarvis, saying, "Hey, Jarvis, look at those bad guys. Call this person." Like, like he's he's multitasking using his voice because that is the fastest way for us to um, communicate with tech, not with uh, with the computing and technology around us. We can talk at about 150 words a minute, but we can only tap into our little black mirrors at 50 words a minute. So it's faster, it's more seamless. And uh, you know, if we're going to take advantage of the technology around us, we have to learn to um uh, to communicate. And I sort sort of kind of of um, plugging our minds into um, technology, which uh, is not a game that I'm playing at the moment. Um, uh, this Neuralink, <laughs> <fastest way>. exactly. <laughs> yeah. But you know, this 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 seems to be the very obvious next step. Yeah, ag agreed. And selling the vision—that's it. The, the future. And I often say to people when I'm talking to them about Lemur and podcasting, social audio, says it's not being built for today. It's being built for a year, two years from now to get in and get ahead of the curve and be a leader in the space, you know, because it's changes, you know, it's inspiration or desperation. It's much better to be the inspired to change rather than the desperate to change. Like traditional media back in the day when social media came along. No, we are the media. We know how it's done. And then they were like, oh shit, we need to catch up here. And they lost their, their, their position in the front. And, and that's what I'm pitching to people when I talk about voice and what's happening. And when I, when I pitch Lemur, I don't, 
just pitch podcasting and social media. I said, no, I said, it's the voice economy. It's all technology down the line is going to evolve into voice activation, you know, voice interaction, voice commerce, the importance of the sonic branding and sonic identity and the size of that market. And if you don't have a voice presence, you're not going to be able to take part. And what you're doing there, I think, is you're inspiring those radio stations, those bigger companies to say, listen, this is what's happening. Get your own Iron Man suit, <laughs> you know, and I think it's exactly. fantastic, you know. And when I when I, I think it, it was a pitch, it was something to do with um, uh, you were pitching. I, if I remember correctly, there's a few people when I first um, saw you speak or heard of what you were doing. I go, that is brilliant because it was the first time I had read about voice activated and ads and all that. But I'd never heard someone uh, speak about it and talk about it the way you did and that's why I reached out in the first place and it's something I use the whole time the, the voice activation side of it and um, where where do you think things will be in the next five years in regards to that technology because things are moving yeah so yeah I've got quite quite clear view on this so in 2019 we um when we started the business we um uh, we launched three global trademarks, right? So the first was actionable audio ads. The second one was actionable TV ads. And the third one was actionable outdoor ads. And that was how we thought behavior would, would come along and um, definitely how we're educating the market. So, um, you know, we, we lay out this uh, this stand that, you know, people have a smart speaker, they use it to listen to streaming audio and ask questions. So we created a end-to-end -end format where we run ads on the radio that you can talk back to and they give that measurement great job done and now that's kind of generally accepted as you know the best practice for audio advertising right now the next phase we just launched um is actionable tv ads so you can run um connected tv ads where we put our tracking pixel on standard tv so you're watching ad funded on demand uh, tv like uh, itv um uh, itv hub or kind of more for and the ads come on and one of them said what i will say uh tonight's pizza nights if you want to get your discount off your pizza tonight then just say alexa open pizza up delivery and the same dashboard we can then deliver end-to-end -end attribution for that kind of um voice engagement now that makes a lot of sense um so that's what's going to be growing taking a lot of our focus over the next year or two as long as building out the the audio business um and then when we we expect um you know at, Amazon said last year, or like Q4 last year, that um, they've seen a 30% increase year on year of people engaging with Alexa. Um, so we're, people are going to be using these devices more and more and trust their assistant. And I spoke to um, Ariane Walker, who's the global evangelist for Amazon smart vehicles. I spoke to her in, in California last summer and they'd performed some, some research that says that once you've chosen an assistant at home, then that's the one you take with you. So when you then get your new car and you set it up and choose your assistant in the car you'll choose alexa and so people will be driving along and they'll be able to talk to their smart um their, their, their assistant in the car and that's where we can tie up attribution for outdoor advertising so you're driving along the road and you see a big um a big digital display sign which goes come to mauritius uh, to mm -hmm. find out more about your holiday and book it then just say uh alexa open to e mauritius so you then say alexa open to e mauritius as you're driving along and by the time you got home you've planned out your next summer holiday but we're able to then deliver attribution that it was that sign that inspired me to engage with that brand and then um, go that step further on booking that holiday and kind of tying these these three big problems these huge um, areas that take up a lot of ad spend and kind of tv and outdoor advertising they're crying out for solves for attribution and we firmly believe that um, what we're doing is is doing that and that's a you know like the opportunity there in someone's car to be able to target them accurately again at the moment it's what radio again that's it exactly. there's no yeah. way of tracking that so to be able to have that seamless transition from the home into the car sounds awesome 